So over here, the very first thing we are having is network. Okay, so when we are talking about a network, right? A network is what? It is a group of interconnected computers over here, which can communicate which either with each other over here and they can share their resources right so for that our computers they can either connect it by using the wire or by wireless over here right so let's understand it with the help of an example so let's say we are having some group group of friends right we are having some group of friends now these friends they want to share the information they want to share their files with each other right so for that what they will be doing is either they can send letters which we were using previously right they can use your post office letters over there to share their information to share their resources over there but there that will be very slow right sending these letters nowadays it will be very slow and it will be very inefficient over there instead of that what you guys will be doing is you will be creating a network where anyone can share their information right instantly anyone can share their information so that is what your network over here and that is how our computer network it will be working right which is a group of connected computers over here and our computers they can share the information their resources with each other right like our computers they can be connected inside the same building right inside the same floor the same room also right or even we can also connect our computers in different different countries right and for that our computers they are using for connection they are using your cables or your wireless signals over there right along with that when we are watching the movies in the internet we are looking for the games in the internet so for that we are also using the network over there right along with that we all are using your internet which is one of the biggest network we are having right the largest computer network we are having that is what your internet right where our computers they are getting connected all around the world so that is what our network is after this we are having the importance of network so over here when we are talking about the importance of our network right so over here as you are saying our network it will be allowing us to share our files right it will be allowing us to communicate over here around the globe right between the different different users we will be having like a collaboration right we can share our resources with each other right like we can share our hardware devices over there the printers we are having the scanners the storage devices right so the resources we are having on those components we can also share right which will be also allowing this network over here a great example for our resource sharing and utilization right and over here along with that it is providing us a internet connectivity of a network it will be helping us to connect the devices on the internet right it will be allowing us to connect the devices on the internet over here great so over here when we are talking about this capital internet right when we are talking about the capital internet over here it will be talking about the global network we are having right it is talking about the global network which we are having is your internet for your accessing your websites over there for sending the mails for playing the games over there for watching the movies but when we are talking about this small internet 
right it means that we are having a interconnected network right we are having a interconnected network over there right which will be having a very small scope right so over here our this big internet it can be become our small internet but this is small internet it cannot become our big internet over here because this is a global network we are having and this is just a interconnected network we are having right so that is what our internet after this we are having our topologies and the very first we are having the bus topology so over here what we are having we are having our bus topology right as you are saying and the bus topology we will be having a single line right we will be having a single cable over here and using this cable our computer they will be getting connected with each other right so let's say this computer over here he wants to send any data to other systems right so what will be happening is this data it will be going to this to this to this and to this right so that is what we are having your bus topology after this we are having your star topology now in the star topology we will be having a central node right like we are having your hub right so using this hub our devices they will be getting connected with each other right using this hub over here our devices they will be getting connected with each other and they can share their data right so it will be sitting in the center over there so that is what we are having is your star topology right after this we are having our mesh topology now when we are talking about this mesh topology over here in this our devices they will be getting connected with each other in the multiple path right they will be connecting with each other in the multiple path so that is what we are having your mesh topology like computer one two three and four right so it will be connecting with him with him with him and with him like this and right so over here your mesh topology it will be confirming that our data right the path of our data it is taking right even if we are having any failure let's say over here this cable and this cable they are facing some failures so our data in this scenario it can also use the different path we are having whereas and the bus topology what will be happening is let's say this computer one it is sending some data to this computer two right now let's say this wire it is having some fault over here so what will be happening is this data it is not going to reach to this computer two we are having so that is what our bus topology and the mesh topology whereas when we are talking about the star topology let's say this computer it is having some fault so simply what we can do is we can remove this from the network and we can use a different device over there without you can say affecting the cables we are having simply they will be plugging this device with the hub so that is what your star topology we are having then after this we are having the ring topology right so the ring topology it will be helping us to connect our devices in the ring formation right so over here let's say this computer one he want to send some data so this particular data it will be circulating in the whole network until the recipient he will be accepting this data right so over here in the ring topology this particular data it will be moving into one direction but now let's say this wire it will be having some faults 
then what we can do okay so over here when we are talking about this ring topology as you can see we are having the single point of failure which is our cable now in that scenario we can use another cable over here right we can use another cable which will be connecting this these devices we are having right so even one cable it will be failing then we can use the another cable over there so that is how we can mitigate this single point of failure but yeah it will be affecting the price we are having right we will be affecting the price we are having then after this we are having your hybrid topology so in the hybrid topology what we will be doing is we will be combining two or more than two topologies over here like let's say we can use our bus topology right let's say we can use our bus topology over here after this bus topology we can use our ring topology for connecting the devices we can use the ring topology over here and after this ring topology we can use like your star topology right so in the star topology we will be having our hub over there right and with that we are going to connect our devices right so that will be our hybrid topology we are having right so in the hybrid topology we are combining two or more than two topologies to create a complex network structure a flexible network structure over there right so for that what we are going to do is we are going to combine the strength of our different different topologies we are having right along with this this hybrid topology it will be also helping us to remove the limitation of a individual topology because it is providing us a more versatile network solution over there right so in the hybrid topology east topology they will be working on their own principles right they will be operating according to their own rule right so these are whatever different different types of topologies we are having after this we are having your types of network and the very first we are having your lan right so lan is a computer network which will be helping us to connect the devices within a limited area like in our home right in our computer lab we were using this lan over there right in the schools we were using this lan and the factories we are using our lans right so over here our local area network it will be helping us to share the files the resources like of our printers right of our internet things right so for those things we are using the lan right and typically when we are talking about the lan and the lan we will be having the wired network right for that we are using our cables the ethernet cables we are using over there which will be helping us to connect the different different devices and along with that we will be using our device which is your switch right we can use our router over there okay so when we are talking about the switch right switch is what it is a interconnecting device we are having right and a intelligent device right so with the help of switch right we can connect our devices inside the network right we can connect our different different devices inside a given network over there along with that as we are talking that it's a intelligent device right so with the help of switch we can decide to whom we are going we are going to send this data let's say this is computer 1 and if he wants to send this data to computer 3 then this data is only going to reach to this our computer 3 over here right so for that we are calling it as your unicast 
right but along with that with the help of your switch we can also perform the broadcast if you want to send any data to all the nodes we are having all the computers we are having so we can also share that particular data with all the systems we are having so that is what we are having the switch which is being used to connect two devices inside a given network right used to connect devices inside the network over there but when we are talking about the router router will be helping us to connect these different different network like over here let's say this is our network one and this is our network two so in the between we will be having our router which will be helping us to connect these two networks we are having right so that is what we are having your switch and the router after this we are having a van so when we are talking about this van the wide area network right so it will be helping us to connect the devices over the large area right over the large geographical area we are having right so we are using this van for our business and the organizational purposes right for connecting our offices to some other location around the world right along with that we can also use this van to connect our home and our individuals with the internet right so that is what we are having your van now our van it will be having some technologies like it will be using the leased lines we are having right it will be using the the multi protocol label switching we are having it will be having the vpns so these are some technologies which we are using in the van over there right so the lease lines the lease lines are the dedicated circuits we are having right which will be renting from our telecommunication providers over there right then we are having our multi protocol switching right which will be using the labels to route our traffic over a wide area network over there right and along with that our multi protocol switching it will be also providing us you can say high performance and the reliability and the last we are having your vpns your virtual private network right so this vpn it will be creating a secure communication between the internet right or you can say over the public network it is going to create a private network for us right so we are using our vpns to connect our devices to this wide area network over our public network over here so that is what our van over here then after this we are having our metropolitan area network your man right so this man it is a network of our device which is going to connect the devices in the metropolitan area over there like we are having cities right we are having our towns so in that we are using our man over there right so over here our man it will be bigger than our land but it will be smaller than our van we are having right so that is what our metropolitan area network we are having right so this man it can connect the several numbers of lands over there right along with that metropolitan area network it is also providing us the high speed data communication for our organizations for our businesses for the individuals who are living inside the city or a specific region over there right so that is what we are having your man right like we are using the tv right so for that we are having the tv cables so over there for the tv cables we are having your man right to deliver our television signals to our homes to our houses over there we are using this metropolitan area network over there right we are using the telephone calls right we are having the telephones over here so they are also using our man after this we are having our global area network your worldwide web we are having so that is what our 
global area network we are having right so over here when we are talking about the global area network right it is our intercontinental network we are having right so over here our gan it will be spanning our around our whole world our entire globe over there right so our global area network it is going to connect the devices the networks over there across different different countries we are having around different different continents we are having right and along with that it will be allowing enabling the communication and the data sharing between them right between this huge network over there so that is what your global area network we are having after this we are having the virtual area network right so a virtual area network it is a logical network we are having right a virtual area network it is a logical network we are having right which is being created using the softwares right and over there they can span till your a very small physical network over there right so over there we can use this virtual area network when we are sitting in the same physical network over there regardless of our you can say different different reason right so when we are talking about the van right they are being created by using the isolated networks we are having by using the isolated networks we are having so over here like we are having our cloud based vpns so that is what that is a virtual area network we are having we are having the sdn the software defined networking that is also a van we are having right so over there our sdn networks they are being controlled by using the softwares by using the virtual area network softwares over there right we are having the mobile virtual networks right so they are being used to share our mobile data over there to provide us the mobile services to our customers so that is what a when we are having right after that we are having the wireless area network right so when we are talking about the wireless area network right in this what we will be doing is we are creating a wi-fi right we are creating a wi-fi network over there right and for that we are not using any cables instead of that we will be using our radio waves to transmit our signals over there we will be using our radio waves right so in this wireless area network what will be happening is our data it won't be bound for any path it can take any path whatever it want to take right it can freely move over the area over there like in our homes in our office in our you can say public spaces over there our wireless area network it can freely move while maintaining a secure communication right so that is what we are having your wireless area network right and for that like we are having our laptops we are having our mobile phones right we will be connecting them with the help of you can say wi-fi right and whenever we are trying to connect with them what we have to do we have to look for the name of that particular you can say network over there right and that is what known as your ssid right your service set identifier we are having which is being used to name a particular network over there right along with that we will be selecting our security over there right and once all these things will be happening right we are selecting the name we are giving the password then the devices they will be able to can say authenticate themselves right and then they will be able to exchange the data 
right so that is what we are having your wireless area network right so over here our wireless area network it will be having a access point right it will be having the access point access point means to say from where like our internet it is arriving like you have seen in our router we are having a van port right so from here our internet will be arriving we will be having a nic card a wireless nic card or you can also say a network adapter right so we are having our network adapter inside our devices inside our mobile phone inside our you can say laptops over there and these nic's they will be helping us to connect with these wireless networks we are having right after that we are also having our antennas over here right which will which will be helping us to increase or amplify or to focus our signals our radio signals along with that they will be also helping us to increase the length of our you can say wireless area network we are having right and and the last we will be having our security for that we are having our wireless encryption and that we are having your wef right we are having your wpa we are having your wpa2 so guys over here what we are using is nowadays we are having the wpa3 which is the latest wireless encryption we are having for the security of our wireless network so in the very first we were having your wep your wired equivalent privacy right so in the 90s we were having this wep over there but later on it was found that it was having lots of cryptography flaws right and because of this this particular you can say protocol over here it was vulnerable and to mitigate this we introduced your wpa right which was introduced on 2003 over there right so it was much more advanced than our wep but later on certain vulnerabilities were found inside this wpa also so on the next year we introduced your wpa2 over there right so over here our wpa2 it was using aes for the encryption it was having the advanced encryption standard right along with that it was also having the long passwords to create a secure network right but the only notable vulnerability we were having inside this wpa2 over there is that that if someone will be getting the access of our network then they can attack inside the different different devices we are having over there right so there was the threat of your internal attackers right and later on we introduce your wpa3 on your 2018 we introduce your wpa3 over there right so this is the new and the simplified Wi-Fi security we are having, which is providing us the more robust authentication. And it is also having the increased cryptography strength, which is also helpful in the sensitive data markets over there. So these are the different different types of networks we are having. After this, we are having the OSI model. So over here, what we are having, we are having the OSI model, which stands for your open system interconnection, right? So over here, we are having the OSI model, right? And the first layer we are having is your physical layer, right? The first layer we are having is the physical layer, and these are our software-based layer, and these will be our, you can say, hardware-based layer, and in between we are having the transport layer which is considered as the heart of our OSI model. Now, in the very first, we are having the application layer. So now, let's understand this OSI model from the sender's point of view. 
right so over here let's say our sender he wants to send some message like hello to the receiver he will be sending this message as your hello so what he will be doing is he will be writing his message inside the email right inside the web browser right he will be using the whatsapp the telegram over there right different different application right so all those things are happening inside our application layer now the application layer it is also known as our human computer interaction layer because in this our application they can access our network services right so later on this information it will be going to our presentation layer over here now the work of your presentation layer is to encrypt and to compress our data right along with that our presentation layer it will be also checking the format by which the receiver can understand it right later on this particular information right which has been encrypted and which has been compressed over here like previously let's say it is like your hello but after encrypting it it is looking like your o l l e h right so later on this particular information it will be reaching to our session layer now the work of your session layer is to make a session between the sender and the receiver right after that we are having the transport layer now the transport layer it is going to break this particular information into small small blocks right it will be performing the segmentation of our information over here like previously it was looking like this but now it will be broken into the blocks now it will be like h right along with that in the transport layer the sender he will be deciding which protocol he want to use whether he want to use the tcp or whether he want to use the udp over there right if he will be using the tcp what will be happening is the tcp it will be providing him the acknowledgement right let's say the sender he wants to send some data to this receiver right he will be sending it now if the receiver he will be receiving this data then over there what he will be doing is he is going to send an acknowledgement to the sender over here right it will be confirming that yeah i have successfully received your data whatever thing you want to share it with me right and let's say if the receiver he has not properly received the data then he will be again sending an acknowledgement that there was some uh, problems some errors over there so send me this data again so that will be happening with the tcp but we are having the udp which is a connectionless protocol so it is not going to provide us any acknowledgement right so in this scenario what the sender will be selecting he is going to select the tcp because he is sending some sensitive information over here some important information over here so for that he want to get a acknowledgement right so he will be creating a header and inside this header he will be selecting the tcp then this particular information it will be reaching to our network layer over here now this network layer right over here it will be providing the ip address right it will be providing the ip address so over here two more headers will be added like this was our information h this was our protocol we were having tcp and a new header will be created with the name source ip and your destination ip we are having right and later on this information it will be reaching to our data link layer right so the data link layer it is going to perform the error correction over there right along with that it will be also maintaining the transfer speed between the sender and the receiver over there right along with that it is going to provide the physical address like previously the network layer it was providing the logical ip address right but this data link layer it will be providing us the physical address which is our mac address we are having so two more headers will be added over here right which will be our source mac then our protocol message destination ip we are having and we are having the destination 
Mac. So it's IP. Right? And later on, this information, it will be sended in the physical layer over there. Right? So in the physical layer, what will be happening is this particular data, it will be converted into the binaries into your 0 and 1. Because computers only understand your binaries over here. Right? And later on, they will be converted into the signals and then it will be received by the receiver we are having. Right? So, after this, what will be happening over here is Right. After this, the receiver, he will be receiving this data, right? And he will be receiving in the physical layer. Right. So after that, what will be happening is that particular analog data, right? That particular analog data we are having, it will be getting converted into the digital data, right? And then over there, it will be send it to the data link layer. Now this data link layer, it is going to check the header right it will be checking the headers of the, our message which we have shared right so over there it will be looking for the mac address the destination mac address right and from there it will be finding that oh it's my mac address so it will be removing this header right it is going to remove this header from there and after that it will be sending this to your network layer now the network layer it will be finding that oh it's my ip address then it will be removing this header also then it will be send it to the transport layer now previously in the transport layer we were performing the segmentation is right so in the receiver end what will be happening is previously we were having the segmentation so this side assembly will be happening right that particular data it will be getting assembled again right so now it will be again looking like this o l l e and h right again it will be looking like this over here right it will be getting assembled the segmentation it was happening in the sender side but in the receivers and assembly will be happening right and then it will be sent it to the session layer now the session layer it will be checking the legitimacy of that particular session right and then it will be sent it to the presentation layer now in the sender side we were compressing the data right we were compressing the data along with that we were encrypting the data so this side we are going to decompress the data we will be extracting it and we will be decrypting the data right so from here it will be again looking like this right and then it will be send it to the application layer where the receiver he will be seeing that oh someone has sended him hello message so that is how the oversight will be working okay so if you guys are finding to remember this OSI model over here right so for that what you can do is the sequence of the layers we are having so for that you can remember it in this way please do not throw sausage pizza away so whenever you guys will be eating the pizza next time you guys are going to remember this OSI model right but over here guys we are not using the OSI model so over here your OSI model it is just in reference model practically we are not using it right the practically we are using your TCP IP model over here right this is the standard which is being used globally right so that we guys can connect to each other right we can share our data with each other over there right so the reason we were discussing about the osi model before over there is if we are not having any idea about the osi model then it will be a bit difficult for us to understand the tcp ip model right so in the tcp ip model right it will be ensuring our you can say this delivery of our data right the messages over the network because it is going to provide us the acknowledgement 
of the data whether they are successful or not right so inside this we are having your four layer right and the very first and the very top we are having the application layer right which will be sending the information and the files to the transport layer now the transport layer it will be performing the segmentation right then the internet layer it will be providing the ip address to send the data and then in the last we are having the network access layer which will be looking for how the data it is getting exchanged between the ips between the host to the network over there right so that is what we are having the tcp ip model your transmission control protocol over internet protocol over there right which was being created by the department of defense right so this is what our tcp ip model after this we are having our ip address and our subnets okay so when we are talking about the ip address right they are the unique address we are having right which are being used to identify our devices over the internet or over the local network over there right so for that but we are having your ip addresses it is like the rules right it is like the rules we are having which will be governing the format of our data which will be sent over the network or the local network because our internet it needs a way right our internet it needs a way over there to differentiate between the different different devices we are having over there like we are having the database we are having the servers we are having the mobile phones we are having the laptops right so over there our internet right it's needs a way to differentiate between the different different devices right so over there our ip our internet protocol it is the way for differentiating between these devices right and that is why it is one of the essential part we are having of how our internet will be working over there now when we are talking about the ip address it will be like the strings of number we are having right which will be getting separated by these periods we are having right by these periods they are getting separated or they are also known as your octet right so over here our ip right like when we are talking about this ip version 4 right it will be having your four octet right the size of our ipv4 it is your 32 bits right which is being broken into your four octet and a single octet it will be consuming the size of your eight bits over there right so our ip it will be looking something like this your 192.168.16 dot three right so that is how the ip address will be looking like right so in this each and every octet we are having right each and every octet we are having it will be ranging from your zero till your two five five right so the full range of our ip address it will be looking something like your zero dot zero dot zero dot zero till your two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot two five five right so that is how the full range of our ip address it will be looking like now when we are talking about the ip address guys they are not random right they are being produce and they are being allocated by our aina we are having right your internet assigned number authority we are having right so your aina is what it is a division of our i can we are having right which is actually a non-profitable organization right and it will be helping us to maintain the security of our internet 
right and also it will be allowing us to be used by it right so over here that is what our ip now whenever we are visiting any website right so over there what we will be happening is we will be writing the domain name like let's say i will be writing google.com over here if i want to access google over there then for that what i will be doing is i will be writing google.com over there right but in the background what is happening is it will be writing the ip address of the google right like let's say it is like your 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 .8. Right, so whenever we are putting the google.com in our browser in the background, it will be taking the IP of it, right? And after that, recognizing the IP address of our domain, what it will be doing is it is going to load this website in front of us, can say converting our IP address to the domain name and from domain name to the IP address so now over here when we are talking about the IPv4 as I was saying that we are having the four octets right and depending upon our IP we are having the classes of it right and from here our class 8 will be ranging from your 0 till 126 right it will be ranging from your 0 till your 126 right over here we are not going to use your 127 although it is being written over there but we are not using it right then the class b it will be ranging from your 128 till your 191 right then the class c it will be ranging from your 192 till your 223 right then your class d it will be ranging from your 224 till your 239 right and in the last we are having till your 240 till your 255 we are having so over here as i was saying that that we are not going to use your 127 over there loop back so over here your 0 and your 127 right so we are not using them right so the class a it will be ranging from your 1 till your 126 over there right so over here we are having this 127 as a whole range we are using it like our 127.0.0.0 over there right so which is our loopback address and it is also known as our local host address right so we are using our loopback address to check whether our tcp ip whether our you can say network interface card it is correctly implemented or not and let's say if you will be sending any message to this loopback address right so that particular message will be received by your system again then over there we are having two more ips like dot one and your dot two five five so over here if i will be over here if i will be writing your ip config is it showing me something like your 192.168.29.1 so what it is saying it is a default gateway we are having right so it means that the very first ip of a network segment it will be known as the default gateway right and this particular ip it will be also belonging to the to the node from where the internet is arriving right to our networks entry point we are having and since our router is what it is most likely the entry point we are having for our wireless network so over there this will be also your router's ip address if you guys will be copying it and you will be pasting it into your browser then it is going to show you your router right so it will be also your router's ip address then over there we are having this dot 255 
right we are having this dot 255 so the very last ip of our network segment it will be known as our broadcast ip right so this is what our broadcast ip we are having right which is being used to transfer the data between all the devices which are connected inside your network right inside your local subnet you are having right so that is what our default gateway and the broadcast ip but when we are talking about the network id then it will be your dot zero we are having okay so over here when we are talking about subnetting subnetting is what like you will be having a big network but now you are going to break this big network into the logical segment right so that is what known as your sub your subnetting over here right you are going to break this big network into the logical segments and each segment it will be known as your subnet over here now over here our class a it will be helping us to give us around your one crore ip address right inside this we can connect around your one crore host over there right in the class b we can connect around your 65000 and the class c we can connect your 255 host right so over here when we are talking about the host and the network right so for that what we are having is we are having the and the network bits right so over here our network it will be denoted as your one and your host bit it will be denoted as your zero right so in the very first we are having your class a right so in the class a we are having a single network host right we are having just a single network bits over here and rest of that we are having all the host bits host host and host right and then we are having in the class b right we are having two network bits and rest of that we will be having the host bits after that we will be having the class c in this we are having your three network bits and we will be having a single host bit over here right so over here since we are having a single network bit right and as i was saying that each octet it will be consuming the size of your eight eight bit right so it will be your slash eight and this we are having two network bits right so it will be your slash 16 and which we are having your three network bits then it will be like your slash 24 right so previously what we were having is we were having your class full ip addressing right so whenever we have to perform the subnetting or whenever we have to you can say connect any host right so we were looking into the classes right for performing the subnetting we were looking into the classes and depending upon the classes we were performing the subnetting like as i was saying that in the class a we can connect around your 16 crores right in the class b we can connect around your 65000 right in the class c we can connect your 255 host right so let's take an example over here now let's say you guys have to connect 100 host so what do you say which class you guys are going to choose the class a class b or class c because our class d and our class e they will be reserved right your class d it will be reserved for your multicasting and your class e as the name suggests it will be reserved for your experimental purpose so whenever we have to connect any host right whenever we have to you can say perform the subnetting over there we are only using these three classes right so in this scenario what we will be using is we will be using the class c because in this we just have to connect your 100 host and easily we can connect our 100 hosts inside this 255 over there the reason why we are not using the class b 
over here also we can connect the uh, you can say 100 host over here the reason we are not selecting the class b over here because the rest of the ip address we are having they will be getting waste right it is going to waste all those ip address and as we all know that we are getting outnumbered in the case of your ip addresses right that is why we are having your ipv6 okay so over here we will be selecting the class c so how many ips we are wasting over here 155 ip address we are wasting right but over here as you can see we are wasting these many ip addresses over there right and later on after some time right around your 2000 right we were having you can say lots of lots of devices like previously we were only having one or two devices inside the house but nowadays if you will be looking into you can say everyone's home right so what we are doing is we are consuming around your 20 ip addresses right like i will be having my mobile phone i will be having my laptop i will be having my other devices also and same for my other family members we are having so around we are consuming around your 20 ip address and a single home over there right so after that what we did it we introduce your class less enter domain routing right so after that what we are doing is we are performing the subnetting by looking into the side notation we are having right we we won't be looking into the classes over here now let's say over here again we have to connect the 100 host again we have to connect the 100 host but instead of using this 255 we are having your 128 so how many ip address we are wasting 28 so we are having our four octets three and four now let's say we are having the class c right we are having a class c over here right and the ip we are having is like a 192.168.20.0 slash 24 since we are having three network bits that is why we are having this slash 24 over here right and the subnet mask it will be having the default one it will be your 255.255.255.0 right so over here what we have to do is we have to connect 60 host inside this we have to connect 60 host inside this right so over here this will be our network bit network bit so it will be your eight network bit it will be your eight network bit then it will be your eight right in total what we are having we are having your 24 right and this will be our host bit so that is why it will be indicated as your zero one two three four five six seven and eight so it will be starting from your zero zero one two three four five six and seven right so we will be calculating them by the help of two power n right so over here 2 power 0 it will be giving us 1 right 2 power 1 it will be giving us 2 2 power 2 it will be giving us 4 2 power 3 it will be giving us 8 2 power 4 it will be giving us 16 then 2 power 5 it will be giving us 32 64 and 128 right now if you guys will be looking like we are having this 255 written over here right we are having this 255 written the range we are having from your zero from your 255 
so over here if you guys will be adding 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1 then in total it will be giving you 255 over there that is why we are not having more than 255 over there right now the question it was saying that we have to connect 60 host right so what we will be doing is we will be looking for the nearest number for this 60 right we will be looking for the nearest number in the ascending order so 2 power 6 right so over here we are going to select this 2 power 6 which is your 64 right so after that we are having a formula for calculating the subnet over here we are having a formula which is your 2n minus 2 right so we are having your 2n which is your 64 right and we are subtracting two values because this is our network id we are having right and the another one we are having is your broadcast ip right so over here it will be giving us the result which is your 62 so how many hosts we have to connect we have to connect your 60 host right and simply we will be subtracting this 62 minus 60 right so that is how we can perform the subnetting over here now once we will be performing the subnetting over there what will be happening is this subnet mask it will be getting checked it will be getting changed over here and this cider notation it will be also getting changed right so previously we were having this host bit over here this octet we were having for the host right whenever we have to perform the you can say subnetting right previously we were you can say only you can say touching the host bit right we were not touching the network bit over there right so over here what was happening is we were having this host bit and we were having this network bit right so the network bit they all will be one right so how many network bit we are having 8 16 and 24 now after that what we will be doing is we will be selecting this column which is your 2 power 6 right we will be selecting this column which is your 2 power 6 and it will be changed into one and same what we are having in the left right so previously we were only having your 24 ones but now we are having two more ones so now we will be getting this slash 26 right and previously we were having the subnet mask which was your 255 255 255 plus 0.0, .0 right after that what we will be doing is we are going to add these two values over here which has been changed into one right so over here it will be giving us your 192 so the new subnet mask we will be getting as your 255.255.255.192 so that is how we can perform the subnetting so after this we are having our public IP and we are having our private IP so over here we are having two types of IP addresses we are having the private IP address and we are having the public IP address over here now let's say this is our network and inside this network we will be having some devices like we are having our printer we are having our mobile phones we are having our laptops right so inside this network we are having different different devices so these devices they will be having the private ip address right they will be using the private ip address over here now the private ip address they are unique inside a network they are not unique around the world no it means that if i'm having a ip then maybe sai he is also having the same ip over there right so that is what our private ip we are having right because our router it needs a way to identify between the different different devices separately over there 
right so for that we are having this private ip address which will be identifying a unique device inside our network right so for that we are having the classes also for the private ip address like we are having the class a which will be ranging from your 10.0.0.0 till your 10.255.255.255 right so this will be in our class a then we are having the class b over there and which we are having from your 172.16.0.0 right which will be ranging till your 172.131 dot 255.255 then after this we are having the class c which will be ranging from your 192.168.0.0 right and it will be ranging till your 192.168.0.255 we are having right so this is what we are having the private ip address right which will be unique inside a given network right after that we are having the public ip address right so whenever we have to connect to the internet right whenever we have to connect to the internet over there we are using the public ip address right so over here what will be happening is we will be having our router right and inside this router we are having a process name net the network address translation so over here what this net will be doing is it will be converting your private ip into the public ip and the vice versa over there right so over here the private ip address it is being associated with our whole address we are having the whole network we are having right so it means that we are having the single ip address and then we are having our net which is converting it into the private ip address but if we will be checking our public ip address all these devices they will be looking for their public ip address then it will be showing them this address over there right and this public ip address it is being given by your isp your internet service provider right and when we are talking about the private ip address for that what we can do we can also manually assign the ip address or we can have the dhcp server which will be assigning the which will be automatically assigning the ip address for us so these are the IP addresses we are having. After this, we are having types of network attacks. So it means that we are having the different different types of network attack we are having, right? Like we are having the MAC spoofing. It means that over here we are having the different different types of attack, right? So in the very first, we are having the MAC spoofing, right? So in this, what the attacker will be doing is he is going to spoof the credentials. Credential means to say the MAC address of the victim, right? So for that, what the attacker will be doing is let's say this is a switch. right let's say this is a switch and we are having some connected device like four device we are having now over here let's say this is our attacker and this is our victim so attacker what will be doing is he is going to steal the mac address right he is going to you can say spoof the mac address of this victim and then he will be continuously sending the request to the switch that this is my mac address this is my mac address this is my mac address but that particular mac address it is actually belonging to our victim right so this particular request it will be going something like this like let's say over here the port number we are having for this uh 
attacker it is your three right let's say the port number we are having for this attacker is your three and along with that he will be sending the mac address of your computer d we are having let's say this is computer d we are having right so what he will be doing is he will be sending this request continuously to this switch we are having now later on the switch it is going to make a record for these information right and over here if anyone will be trying to send any data to this victim what will be happening is this data it will be diverted to this attacker instead of victim the attacker is going to receive that information so that is what your mac spoofing we are having I have config like in the windows we are having your IP config which will be giving us our network information but in the Linux we are having this I have config over here okay so this is the IP address of my Kali Linux and this will be the Kali Linux over here For that, I will be writing this command and then I will be getting a notification over here. See, disconnected. The network connection has been disconnected. After this, we are having a tool with the name Mac Changer. Hyphen H, which is for the help menu we are having, right? So inside this, you can see we are having the different, different options for it, like you can reset to the original mac address you are having or you are letting this tool to select a mac address for you right it will be printing the known vendors for you right or it will be changing to a specific mac address so what we will be doing is we will be using this random one we will be letting this tool to select a mac address for us so over here we will be writing we will be writing your Mac changer hyphen R, which is for random, and then we will be specifying the interface, which is your at zero we are having. Right? So over here you can see the current MAC address, the permanent one we are having, which is starting with your zero zero, ending with your three B. Right? Starting with your zero zero and ending with your three B. And over here you can see it is changing it to some other address right it is giving me the other mac address so that is how the attackers they are you can say spoofing the mac address right then we will be turning on the internet over here for that i have config atho then again if i will be writing i have config over here then you can see this time i am getting some other mac address which is your 4c so that is how the mac spoofing it is being done right that is how the mac spoofing it it is being done now to prevent this mac spoofing we can have the mac binding what we will be doing is we will be binding the ip address and the mac address together over there right we will be having the manage switch which will be helping us to prevent these attacks we are having after this we are having another attack with the name mac flooding So in the Mac flooding, what the attacker will be doing is again, he is spoofing the credential, right? He will be spoofing the credential of the victim over there. And after that, he is going to send the N number of requests, right? He will be sending the N number of requests to the switch that this is my mac address this is my mac address this is my mac address but that will be the spoofed one not as a real one right so when we are talking about the switch so they are having a finite memory they are not having infinite memory over there it means that after a particular period of time their memory it will be getting filled 
and once their memory it will be getting filled what will be happening is they are going to work like a hub right they will be working like the hub over there right and after that they will be broadcasting messages to each and every device which is connected over there so that is what your mac flooding is now after this we are having the man in the middle attack which is also known as the monkey in the middle right so over here let's say we are having two users right we are having anu and shivani right so now these two users right what they are doing is they are sending data back and forth right so after this the attacker will be coming right the attacker he will be arriving and after that he is going to force this user over here right and he is going to turn off the internet connection of this username anu right and then he will be forcing this user anu to use the default gateway of this attacker to connect with the internet right and once this user anu right you can say they are going to uh, use the default gateway of this attacker right what will be happening over there is all the requests right all the requests which will be you can say getting shared by you can say this user shivani and this user anu it will be getting monitored by this attacker right he will be just simply sitting in between and he will be able to monitor the data which is going back and forth right so that is what the man in the middle attack so for that we will be using this windows 7 machine as a victim right and we will be using this kali linux as a attacker machine first i will be showing you whether the internet is working or not i will be looking for the images and you can see the internet it is working fine okay then i am going to close this browser so over here what we will be doing is first we will be trying to grab the ip then it will be asking like what is your ip address what is your ip address right and later on depending upon their response it is going to collect all these information and it will be having the arp table where it will be writing those information right it will be simply mapping out the ip address with their mac address right so in the very first we are having dot one dot two and dot two five four so this dot one it will be my network id dot two will be my default gateway dot two five four will be my broadcast ip over here reason because i am having this windows in my base right so over here my windows it is going to use this dot one for its default gateway dot two five five for its broadcast ip and inside this i am running my kali so as i was saying that what we are going to do is we are going to grab the banner for this windows 7 machine we are having right so for that we are writing hyphen small s right which is for your service and your capital v for your version and then we also want to look for the operating system it is having for that we are writing your capital o over here right and i just want to perform the fast scan right i don't want to scan all the ports we are having inside this windows machine that is why i will be going through this hyphen capital f it is going to scan just the well-known hundred ports we are having hit enter and now it will be grabbing the banner for it for this windows 7 machine
so it is taking a lot of time over here okay now it has just given me the banner great so over here as you can see it is giving us the information about the 89 closed tcp port it means that only 11 ports are open right and these are the ports which are open inside my windows machine right and from here it is giving me the information that it's a windows 7 or it can be your 2008 or your server we are having right this will be the mac address of your windows 7 machine we are having right and it is giving us some operating system detail that it can be your service pack 0 or your service pack 1 and this right now since we are having the information yeah that it's a windows machine so what we will be doing is we will be opening our tool we will be starting our tool with the name actor cap actor cap graphical right so we are going to use this tool to perform the man in the middle attack for us via your rp spoofing right so from here we will be selecting okay right and in the meantime i will be also enabling the port forwarding if i am not enabling the port forwarding then this attack it will be looking like the dos attack right so that is why i will be enabling the port forwarding also for that i will be writing echo one happy forward now i will be checking whether the port forwarding has been enabled or not cat and i'm getting one right if we will be getting zero over here it means that the port forwarding has not been enabled but since it is showing us one that means that the port forwarding has been enabled over here okay so over here you can also see like what it is doing in the background now after this what we will be doing is we will be scanning for the host over here click on it now scanning the whole that mask we are having right and now it is saying that five hosts added to the host list we are having right click on the host list and over here we are having a dot two we are having a two for it right dot two is what this is our default gateway our router's ip and dot two for it this is our victim's ip our windows ip over here right so in the very first we will be selecting this dot two over here as the target one then we will be selecting this dot Two for it as the target two right in the background you can also see they have been selected and then we will be performing the rp spoofing click on this and from here you will be using the uh, poisoning over here a sniff remote connection yeah right now the r poisoning has been started then i will be opening my sniffer with the name wireshark right so a wireshark is what it's a sniffer tool we are having or a network analyzer we are having right which will be helping us to intercept monitor all the traffic which is going through this network we are having now if in the windows 7 i will be opening a site like your testfire.net i will be hitting enter right so this is the site we are having testfire.net and in the linux you can see we are having the huge traffic over here so coming back in the windows machine right what i will be doing is i will be trying to get the ip address for this testfire.net for that i will be using nslookup testfire.net hit enter and this will be the ip address for this testfire.net we are having right which is your 103.224.192.240 right coming back to our kali now one way what we can do is we will be going through the whole network right but it will be kind of difficult so what we will be doing is we will be having this filters right we are going to use the 
Wireshark filters over here, which will be giving us the specific result over there. Right. So for that, I will be writing IP dot address and then I will be giving the address of your test file dot net, which is your one zero three dot two two four dot one eighty two dot two four zero and hit enter. Let me check one zero three two two four one eighty two and two forty. Okay, the command is correct. Let's see. Okay, let me know one thing. I will be again connecting to that side. Restart. Continue without saving. Test fire dot net. It is same one three two two four one eighty two and two forty. Okay, so again, I will be using your IP dot address equals to equals to and then I will be giving the IP of it, which is your 103 dot 224 dot 182 dot 240. Again, it is not capturing it. Okay, let me do in my windows then or in my Linux over here, Firefox. Testfire.net. So over here, this testfire.net, it's a dummy website we are having for the learning purpose. Great. So now you can see it has started capturing the information. Right now it is showing me the, you can say result over here. So previously it was not showing me the result, but now you can say my Varshak, it is properly showing me the result. You can see we are having the site 103, 224, 182, 240. Right. So from here, if I will be following the HTTP stream, right, if I will be following the HTTP stream and then I will be, you can say, Looking into it, then you can see this is showing me the IP address of the victim, which is your testfire.net we are having. Right? That is the testfire.net we are having. Right? So after that, what will be happening is if if this victim, right, here will be you can say putting any credentials, right? So over there they will be getting transferred, right? The attacker he will be able to see those credentials over there right because and this you can see it is a http site it is not a https site over here right and if we are using the http what will be happening is it is going to send our credential in the plain text right it is not going to encrypt our messages over there 
right so that is why we have to use the secure protocols if we will be using the insecure protocols then the attacker they can perform the attacks like the man in the middle attack and then they will be able to we can say grab our credentials right my router it is sorry my washak over here it is responding bit slow over here so in that scenario what we have to do is we have to add a you can say look through these all the traffic we are having right and from here we will be looking for that test fire.net which we were having so in that scenario what i will be doing is i will be closing this attack and i will be showing you from here from my linux machine remove them remove them and i will be writing testfire.net opening the washak again now if we will be trying to sign in over here and we will be giving the credential like i will be writing kemi and kemi and if i will be clicking in the login don't save and it is giving us the error which is saying that login failed right so now after this again we will be going inside of a wireshark and over there we will be looking for this rp dot address ah, and again it is you can say taking bit amount of time over here by shock no worries okay let me theoretically tell you what will be happening over here since the washak is not responding properly okay so over here what will be happening is the victim is using the http right here you can say looking for the http site over here and when the victim will be visiting the http site what it will be doing is it will be sending the data in the plain text right it will be sending the data into the plain text so if the attacker will be coming and he will be trying to intercept this request what will be happening is that particular data right the attacker will be able to see it right the attacker will be able to see that particular information now previously we were giving the credential like your kemi right so the attacker he will be also able to see that information like kemi like previously it was showing us that we are having the testfire.net open and our wireshark right and same thing we will be also able to see the username and the password which we are giving over there so that is how the attackers they are performing the man in the middle attack so after this we are having our firewalls right so when we are talking about the firewalls firewalls are what these are the first line of defense we are having right which will be working on the basis of the predefined rules we are having right they will be working on the basis of the predefined rules we are having and the firewalls they can be your software based and they can be your hardware based also right so over here the firewalls they are going to check both the inbound traffic as well as the outbound traffic right both the traffic they are going to get monitored over here 
So when we are talking about the firewalls, it all started with the simple packet filtering firewall we are having. Right, it all started with the simple packet filtering firewall we are having. So in the packet filtering firewall, it is just going to look for the IP address and the port number. Right, and depending upon that, we will be setting the rules. Right, and since it is just looking for the IP address and the port number, then it will be working on the layer 3 of our OSI model. That is what our network layer. But with the advancement of time, it was not enough, right? So then we got your circuit level gateway firewall, right? So this circuit level gateway firewall, it will be working on the session layer of our OSI model we are having right and it will be determining whether a particular session should be allowed or not that means that whenever you will be looking for any request right you, you will be making any request from your system right so that request it will be going to a proxy which is in between right let's say this is the destination you are having you are trying to access the facebook right inside your organization you are trying to access your facebook over there so what will be happening over there is your request it will be going to the proxy which is in between right and this is the facebook you are having right now this proxy it will be deciding whether you will be allowed to access the facebook or you will be getting an error message which will be saying that that you are not allowed to access facebook inside the organizational network right so that is whatever circuit level gateway firewall after this we are having the stateful inspection firewall which is a combination of our both packet filtering firewall and the circuit level gateway firewall we are having right so the stateful inspection firewall it will be just not looking for the header right but also it will be looking for the three-way handshake we are having right it will be also looking the tcp three-way handshake we are having and depending upon that it will be allowing a particular session right it will be allowing a particular packet over there or it will be flagging it as your malicious over there so that is what we are having your stateful interaction firewall right then we are having our application level firewall now the application level have Firewall, it will be working on our application layer of our OSI model we are having. Right, it will be working on the application layer of our OSI model. Now, this application layer firewall, it can check the traffic, right, which is going through our FTP, our Telnet, our HTTP, our HTTPS, right. So, all the traffic, they are now going to get checked whether they are proper or not. Then after this, we are having the next generation firewall, the firewall which we are using nowadays. Right? The firewall which we are using nowadays, which is your next generation firewall. Right? So over here, our next generation firewall, they can identify, they can also control the applications we are having. Right? And they will be also allowing our network administrators to define policies based upon our application rather than just the IP address. Right? They will be also having the our capabilities of our IPS, the intrusion prevention system we are having. Right? Depending upon that, it will be preventing any sort of unknown threats we are having. Right? It can also perform the deep packet inspection over there right it can also decrypt the encrypted traffic we are having right which will be also providing us the visibility into the malicious websites we are having malicious activities we are having right along with that they are also having the vpn support right to enable a secure remote access for the users over there right so that is what our next generation firewall we are having After this, we are having our IDS, the intrusion detection system, and the IPS, which is your intrusion prevention system. So, so our IDS is what? It's a detective control we are having. Right? So, over there, what it will be doing is, it will be just detecting for the 
suspicious activities right like over here any request which will be coming from the internet first it will be going through the firewall right and then our firewall it will be connected to our switch right it will be directly connected to our switch now with one of the port our ideas is also connected now what our ideas will be doing is it is going to analyze this malicious packet which is being sended by this attacker right so basically over here we are having the manage switch which will be providing us the port mirroring facilities over here right so the traffic which will be coming from the firewall it will be also getting mirrored right in our ideas over here now our ideas what it will be doing is it will be analyzing this traffic over here right and depending upon that it will be saying that oh it's a malicious one right and it will be generating an alert for it right but in the meantime this malicious packet right it is going to harm our network our organization also right so that is what the intrusion detection system we are having it is just going to detect and going to generate an alert for a suspicious activity over there then we are having the ips the intrusion prevention system so the same thing is happening the attacker is you can say sending a file right and he is able to bypass this firewall but this time our firewall it is not directly connected with our switch instead of that it will be connected with our ips our intrusion prevention system we are having right after that our ips it is going to analyze that particular data right depending upon that it will be generating an alert for it and it will be also dropping the packet right so this malicious packet it is not even reaching till our switch so that is how our ideas and our ips they will be working right and depending upon that we are having types of ideas and the ips right so let's take an example like we are having an organization a small one right now this organization it will be having just two or four server over there so in that scenario what they will be doing is they are going to purchase the host right the you can say software version of the ids or the ips for their servers and then they will be manually installing them inside them so this type of ids and the ips which is getting installed and the host system it is known as your host based intrusion detection system and the host based intrusion prevention system right after this let's say this time our organization it is quite big having hundreds and hundreds of soft uh, you can say servers over there right so this time what they will be doing is they will be installing right they will be installing this ids or the ips in their network junction right they are going to install the ids and the ips on their network junction because it is not feasible to implement the ids or the ids system in each and every system they are having so this type of ids and the ips which is getting installed in the network junction it will be known as your network based intrusion detection system and the network based intrusion prevention system over there right along with that we are having one more term which is your vips your wireless intrusion prevention system so this is the device which is being used to find out the rogue access point we are having in our organizational network right so when we are talking about the rogue means rogue access point right so the rogue means the fake access point or the unauthorized access point right so over here what will be happening is the hacker they are going to install the fake access point in our organizational network right so if the employees they will be arriving and they will be connecting with this rogue access point over here what will be happening is the attacker they will be see like what what things the users the employees they are doing over there right along with that he can also get the access of their system 
right so that is what the rogue access point we are having and to mitigate this we are having this wireless intrusion prevention system your whips when we are talking about the ids systems or the ipo system now let's understand how they are going to identify any malicious file over there right how they will be identifying detecting any intrusion over there right so for that what they are having is they are having the signature recognition and they are having the anomaly based you can say detection over there right so in the very first we are having the signature detection over here right so over here in the signature recognition right our idea systems they will be having the signatures of the well-known attacks over there of the viruses we are having malwares we are having right they will be having the signatures for them now whenever any file will be coming to our system right whenever any file will be coming to our system then this signature you can say our ideas over here what it will be doing is it is going to take the string of this particular file and then it is going to compare it with the signature this ideas it is having inside it right and over there if these two signatures they will be matching with each other right it is going to flag this file as malicious right so that is what our signature based recognition what is happening is the attackers right the attackers they are sending a auto executable file right they will be sending a auto executable file and then they are forging that particular file to look like a pdf right so over there what will be happening is let's say you guys are receiving a mail and inside that you are finding an attachment which is saying that it's a pdf right so over there you will be trying to download it but actually it will be the exe file so how we are getting this information is so the exe file they will be having their signature right the files the softwares right anything we are having they will be having their own unique signature right so they will be having their signature like their hex value which will be looking like your 4d 5a it will be looking like your 4d 5a over here and their string view they will be also having our you can say signature they are also having the string view which is your mz right so if we are getting anything like this mz or this 4d 5a so it means that it's a exe file right so over here let's say we are receiving this pdf file over here we are trying to download it but our ideas it will be coming in picture and then what it will be doing is it is going to process it over there right and from there it is getting the signature which is saying that it is like your 4d 5a and mz it's a exe file so that is how our signature based idea set will be working right like whenever any data will be coming right and then our signature based idea set will be working it will be comparing the signatures of them and depending upon that it will be marking it as your malicious then after this we are having your anomaly based intrusion detection system or you can also say like the behavioral or the characteristic based ideas over there okay so let's take an example for this so let's say over here we are having a system right and we are the admin of the system right and we are having some user user one and we are having this user two over here now one day what will be happening is this user one he will be trying to access a file for that he is not having any permission so what do you say is it a normal behavior or not no right it is not a normal behavior so that thing it will be getting flagged right so that is how our you can say anomaly detection will be working right so over here our anomaly based ideas it will be working right it will be looking for the behaviors the characteristics over there right and for that we will be telling that what is a normal behavior 
right and if it will be finding anything which is not coming inside the normal behavior it is going to mark those things as the malicious one so that is what our anomaly detection is then after this we are having the real world network security scenarios okay so previously we were discussing about the different different types of attack we are having right previously we were discussing about the different different types of attack but now over here we are going to discuss about the network security scenarios over here okay so now let's say a phishing mail is coming right a phishing mail it is coming over there so over there what we will be doing is like whenever we are getting a phishing mail right so what we will be doing is we will be looking for the address right we will be looking for the address over there if we are getting any suspicious link we will be simply reporting it as your phishing mail over there right along with that we are not going to download any attachment which we are receiving from these suspicious places over there right we will be looking for the address right so over there whenever you will be opening your gmail right you will be getting three dots over there right so once you will be clicking on them you will be getting the option of your show original so that show original what it will be doing is it will be giving you the detailed information about that particular mail right like from where it is coming and to whom it is being sended over there all those information it will be written inside the show original right along with that we should be having a proper antivirus system right we should be having an anti malware system right which is going to prevent this malware from infecting our system even if we have downloaded that particular attachment over there right then we are having the insider threats so over here when we are talking about the insider threats insider threats are what these are the disgruntled employee we are having or we can also write them as the malicious insiders right the employees the users who are having the permissions and now they are misusing their permissions right so what we will be doing is as you are saying we will be having the strict access control right we will be having the strict access control over there we will be monitoring the employees activities right we will be detecting their user behavior over there right we will be looking whether they are having any sort of unusual behavior or not right along with that we will be also performing the training inside the organization we will be having the awareness program inside the organization over there like if we will be having the insider threats in the future any attack will be going on there then how we will be handling it right so all those things we will be performing over there then over there we are having the insecure wi-fi network right we are having the insecure wi-fi network so previously we were discussing about the wi-fi encryption right so over there if any user he will be using the weak credential he will be using the you can say wep right he will be having the wpa over there and the wpa2 right and they are using the weak credentials so what will be happening is the attacker he will be able to grab the password right the password they are having the security password they are having for their wi-fi over there so and that scenario what we have to do is we have to use the strong unique password right we have to use the protocols the encryption like over here your wpa3 which will be pro uh, providing us the a strong encryption right so that is how we can mitigate this insecure wi-fi network we are having then i guess you guys have seen many a times that the peoples they are using the outdated softwares and the systems 
if we are using any software right if we are using any software over there which is outdated or let's say we are using the operating system like your xp so what do you say is xp secure but do you say guys is xp secure no but if you will be finding any user who is still using the windows xp or windows 7 your windows 8 over there right and if we will be going into the internet over there you will be able to find you can say thousands of exploits for them right you will be able to find thousands of exploits for them now if the attacker he will be able to you can say uh, get the information about the victim that he is still using this kind of operating system over there then he can easily perform the attack over there right he can easily compromise that particular system over there so in those scenarios what we have to do is we have to you can say regularly update right we have to regularly upgrade our systems our softwares over there right as soon as we are getting the patch for it the update for it we are going to update our system because the updates they will be containing the patches for the previously discovered bugs and the vulnerabilities right then we are having your weak password so previously as we were talking about the passwords right what the peoples they are doing is they are using the password which they can actually remember right they are using the password which they can actually remember over there right so instead of that what we have to do is we have to use the password a very unique a strong password over there right we do not have to use the weak password because if we will be using the weak password then the attacker he will be easily able to you can say crack it or many a time you have seen the peoples they are using the default credentials like we are having our router right so whenever we will be installing our router what we are going to do is we are going to change the default credential we are having in our router like by default it will be coming like your admin admin right so from the admin admin what we will be doing is we will be converting it into the strong a unique password so that no one will be able to you can say get inside our router over there right along with that we are having our dos attack we are having our ddos attack like previously we were discussing about the dos ddos right so over there in that scenario what we will be doing is let's say a dos attack is going on so in those scenarios we should be having a proper resources because in the dos ddos attack the attackers they are trying to eat our resources they are trying to consume our resources as much as they can so in those places what we will be doing is we should be having extra resources we should be having the load balancers the proper you can say security solutions over there which will be preventing us from the dos attack right we can also use the proxy right we can also use the proxy over there like the reverse proxy which will be helping a server from the direct attack so any request which will be coming from the attacker first it will be going for that particular proxy which is in between then it will be going to the server over there right so in that scenario what will be happening is the dos attack it will be you can say done on the proxy it is not going to reach inside our server right along with that in our proxy we can also configure the rules right so that is how we can have the cyber security strategies in which we will be using the different different solutions over there we will be having the employee training right we will be taking the proactive measures measures like this right which is going to safe safeguard our you can say from the various kind of threats over there right we will be performing the regular update right we will be performing the ongoing monitoring of our components of our you can say resources over there which will be helping us 
to prevent these types of network attacks we are having.